Welcome to the Sun and Fun 2021 Quick Take Episodes. All right, we're here at Sun and Fun 2021 at AirTech Coatings with Robbie, and just want to stop by and kind of share what he does and offers here at his company. So, Robbie, what? Well, well first off, what's this beautiful looking plane behind us, and and what's the process used to uh, to paint it? Well, this is a 45 Cub done by one of our customers, CND Aviation, over in Bessemer, Alabama, and they use our product. And like I always tell people, you know, our product's easy to work, but when you have professionals doing it, you know, it, it, them two goes together, you end up with something like this. This is a kind of a unique plane. It's got a lot of very original parts on it, and they tried to keep it pretty well stock, you might say, other than we know it didn't look like this in 45. But uh, yes, it's got our product on it, and they were kind enough to let us display it here at our booth at Sun and Fun this year. Now, I'll, I'll try to get a shot really close to, to see the shine, but this literally looks like wet paint. Is there, what, what's the magic uh, sauce in, in having that kind of finish, or is it just the product? Well, if I told you, I'd have to kill you. You know what I mean? <laughs> this is, no, it's, it's, it's a urethane all the way through the system. It's a urethane with some tricks in it, not, not flex agents, but some other tricks that keeps it flexible for years and years. We've got planes that's 25 plus years that still look basically like brand new. Uh, as with most gear things, it's, you know, it comes out very shiny if it's done right, you know. So it's all in the application of the gun and getting everything tuned in right. But we have a lot of first-time customers that at some point I get around and get to see their plane and I just shake my head. I go, I've got 20-plus planes under my belt. And I'm like, how did they do that? You know, I mean, it, it's, it just, it works out for a lot of people. Just sometimes not for me. <laughs> you know, I have a problem and... I don't know what happened, but it is an easy product to work with. Do you have a specific uh, go-to gun that you like to use, and can you use a regular gun versus the HVLP? Or, well, the HVLPs work well. We we like to tell people to keep the pressure high because it's a single stage. We want to break it up for atomization. Uh, Don here and them use the Awada. Uh, I like the Segola, Italian-made gun. Then you get into the size, you know, nozzle, 1.3, 1.4, how fast are you used to paint? There's a there's a tremendous amount of variables to just point blank tell you a certain gun. Uh, I tell people that if you don't know how to paint very well, if you go buy a $900 gun, you're not going to paint very well with a $900 gun. And a professional is going to pick up a Harbor Freight gun and he's going to put you to shame. So <laughs> it, it takes practice. Awesome, awesome. Well, let's let's go look at the product. All right, Robbie, if you could maybe walk us through the, the different chemicals and processes and steps if you were to order a, a paint kit. If I was painting my airplane, walk me through the steps to what you'd use. Well, like all other systems out there, you have to follow the instructions. You can't cross, you can, some things will actually physically cross together, but to be within your STC, you need to follow the instructions. And out of our system and probably other people's system, that is probably the most problem we have is, is they have a problem and then when I talk to them, they have tried to, in their mind, used to another process. Ours is, is you will use our you will use our glue, it's stc part of our, our STC, I'm sorry, it's pma part of our STC. And this will be an application for a fabric aircraft? For a fabric aircraft that's certified. Now you're going to get the same product for your experimental. We do, it. you know, we're not going to sell you a lesser product for an experimental, but for certified I have to go through stuff to be pma You will use our glue and our reducer, which is PM8, and that will be what you use to put your fabric on like all other systems. You do your stitching, your shrinking, and everything that's involved. Then we go straight to uh, the PFU 1030 primer, which is would be similar to this right here. It's a, it's a kind of a khaki, light khaki colored. It's got the flex built into the binder, not a flex agent. And you'll do three coats of that, sand it smooth, and there's no brushing of, of fabric or anything, it goes directly into that. And once you sand that smooth, you go straight to paint. And you can go with two to three coats whenever you're satisfied, put your stripes on or whatever. So, you know, there's a there's about one other system out there that's very few steps like ours, you know, you know I could let, sit here and tell you, put the fabric on, three coats of primer, two coats of paint, and you're done. But we all know that the sandpaper has to come out at some point to end up with something like Don and M's aircraft that they did here. 
Okay. okay. Do you, uh, is it required? I think we talked at one point in time, if you do a prime within so much time, you can go direct to paint as long as you don't have any runs. Like yes. that. So can you go direct to paint? Yes, yes. You can. There's two ways to do the primer. You can put the primer down, let it soak, what we call finger slick, where you can lightly touch it, then you come back with the next coat. When it gets to where you can lightly touch it, put the third coat down, then let it cure for a day, and then sand it. Each time you do that, it's soaking into the fabric. But a lot of guys will put one coat down, let it get finger slick, put the second one down, and then walk away for 24 hours, then sand it smooth, and then put the third coat on. That one completely stands on top of the weave, and that's for the guys that's wanting it look like it's been dipped in, gla in plastic or something. No chance of seeing any weave of fabric? No, no it, it, and we're, we're as light. I have personally did all tests. There for a time I was cutting square footage out of different stuff coming through my cousin's restoration shop and I found really early on that was not fair. It was not fair to another system for me to hold up a piece and go see we're lighter than them because I don't know what the mechanic done. He, he may have put an extra coat or whatever. I've kind of played with all the systems and did it by their instruction. We all seem to fall in that 30 gram somewhere around so you know. We are partnering with great companies like Dynon Avionics, Airworks, AirTech Coatings. These sponsors make all of this original aviation content possible. So I invite you after this video to check out the links below and say hello to our sponsors. Tell them you found them here on the Experimental Aircraft Channel. We're, we're all, as far as adding extra, we just have a good quality building primer that you're gonna sand the top off a little bit to flatten it out. So you've got the glue, which is more for the, the fabric, and then the primer, right? It, back in the day that there was a silver does does this primer take the place of the silver is that yes the you know the silver was a mechanical blocking of the sun worked very well uh, early on you know your cotton fabrics was an organic they're trying to rot if it's in the bottom drawer of a closet in the dark I mean it's an organic <laughs> problem uh, the the Dacrons that she used today uh, you know we go over whether it's super flat or you know sink and night, you know any of the legal fabrics were legal to just go over that product and you know the the UV barrier is in our primer so I use the I use the analogy that when you left your camp this morning you didn't put silver all over your arms you put a clear sunblock and it's a light stabilizer type situation and we've I have people call that I'm doing an annual on an airplane and I'm looking inside and I think I can see light coming through and and it's well that they're concerned but that's old school and you know it if they didn't put they may have been a little light on the primer or whatever but most good quality urethanes and our primer has a light stabilizer we've never had from the FAA a problem with deteriorating you know, with light, so it's it's built into it. That's the the sunblock. So we just had a jet, and now a, a piston aircraft fly over in 30 seconds. Hey, we're at an air show, right? We're at sun and fun. We're at sun and fun. All right, so that is for uh, the fabric application. Obviously, your paint works on metal. Is there a little bit different chemical or application process for metal? Uh, no, it's you know on typical aircraft like the J3, you've got a boot cowl and a cowling that's metal or fiberglass. Uh, the only issue that I have and probably any other paint company would have would be, as you see, our primer is this light color. And then if you, you prep the aluminum and if you've got a dark gray epoxy primer and then you paint, say, a yellow over all of that, it's going to take several coats to ever hide that. So we have like a white epoxy primer. You, you want to get that base kind of close, but the top coat, it goes right across metal. While I've while I've been here in Sun and Fun, I've took tech calls all day yesterday off and on. They rolled on my cell phone and I've had two people want to paint a Bonanza and a 182. And I said, it's all about, we have an epoxy primer that is excellent. I said, it's a, it's a matter of what's under it. And then we use same paint on top. Okay. All right. Well, thanks for the, the quick take here at Sun and Fun 2021. It's great weather. We've got 85 degrees, pure blue skies. And jets and piston aircraft were flying. It was 90, 90 yesterday. Yeah, yeah. And we were zero about three and a half weeks ago at Arkansas. So I'm, <laughs> I don't, I don't adapt real well when it gets hot real quick like that. <laughs> yeah, it, it is a little bit warm. So where can uh, everybody get in touch with you and uh, check out your website and call and talk to you? Yeah, 
the ideal thing is just go to airtechcoatings.com. Uh, we, if you go from there and click the YouTube button, I've got some basic how-tos as far as getting familiar with our system. Uh, you can look at us on Instagram or Facebook. You know, if you go to Instagram and follow us, um, I got a nephew that works with a lot of my social media stuff, and we try to do a Fabric Tip Friday about every Friday, and. And, I, and it usually works for any of the systems. It's just any time I have a little idea or someone has showed me in the past, it usually will carry across and it makes someone's life a lot easier. And We try to incorporate those every Friday. Well, thanks for the quick tour today. Yep. Thank you. Thanks for watching this week's episode of the Experimental Aircraft Channel. Remember to like and subscribe. Check out our brand new website at experimentalaircraftchannel.com. I'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching.